greetings to all and welcome back to my channel so after i put my last video i have been receiving a lot of feedback about what kind of videos i should be making and uh, one of the most common feedback that i received was short videos revising or rather summarizing the topics of dermatology in a way which is helpful to both neat pg students as well as a budding dermatologist so over a course of a few videos somewhere around 25 to 30 videos i'll try to cover all the important topics pertaining to neat pg exam so that uh, when you try to solve the mcqs it becomes easy and each video will be around 15 to 20 minutes long so you can easily see the video and then practice your questions so the first video i've made is back to basics because i want to make a video uh, whenever you open your dermatology books before that if you see this video it will be easy for you to read your books it will be easy to understand the terminology so let us start today we will be learning about the layers of the skin the cells which are present in skin and then the lesions the primary and the secondary lesions shapes and the phenomenon in skin so i have started with the basic structure of the skin so here we are we know that the skin the uppermost layer is the epidermis followed by the dermoepidermal junction then the dermis and the subcutaneous fat so from above to below epidermis dermoepidermal junction dermis and the subcutaneous fat now dermis is also further divided into the papillary dermis and the reticular dermis the papillary dermis and the reticular dermis so in the reticular dermis even the blood vessels are present and then finally we have the subcutaneous fat which is known as the panniculus so in fat we see that there are the septae so this purple colored these are the septae and this is the lobule so further when we read about panniculitis that is the inflammation of the subcutaneous fat panniculitis we will learn that it is of two types it is septal and lobular so if it is in involving the septa it will be septal panniculitis if it involves the lobule it will be lobular panniculitis now we start with the epidermis so i will be briefly revising the layers of the skin so there are four layers of the skin from above to below we have the stratum corneum stratum corneum stratum granulosum stratum spinosum and the lowermost is the basal part fine so stratum corneum so the word stratum strata means layers so we will be talking about layers stratum corneum means that there will be present of corneocytes corneocytes will be present here so what are corneocytes these are keratin containing cells keratin containing cells now the thickening of stratum corneum is known as hyperkeratosis it is known as hyperkeratosis next we have stratum granulosum so why the name stratum granulosum so the cells which are present in this layer they have certain granules these are the keratohyaline granules keratohyaline granules so the presence of keratohyaline granules gives the name stratum granulosum thickening is known as hypergranulosis then we have the stratum spinosum stratum spinosum so why the name stratum spinosum because there is presence of spines now what are these spines that i'm talking about it is the desmosome so maximum number of desmosomes are present here thus the name stratum spinosum and thickening of this layer is known as acanthosis acanthos means a thorn so it is a prickly layer it is a prickly layer and then we have the stratum basale so it forms the basal layer of the epidermis so if there is a question about uh, which layer contains the highest amount of keratin we know it has to be stratum corneum or which layer has keratohyaline granules maximum stratum granulosum presence of desmosome stratum spinosum and then the basal layer now is there a fifth layer in skin yes in some parts of our skin there is a fifth layer which is stratum lucidum so the word lucid it means that it is a clear layer and it is usually found in the palms and soles 
so we've talked about the four layers the five layers are there also three layers in the skin so yes in certain diseased conditions there can be three layers because stratum granulosum is absent so yes in diseases like psoriasis where stratum granulos granulosum is absent there can be presence of three layers it can be decreased or absent stratum granulosum can be decreased or absent in psoriasis so we've quickly re revised the layers of the skin now the cells of the skin so 90 to 95 percent of the cells are the keratinocytes these are the keratinocytes rest are the melanocyte the langerhans cells and the merkel cells so what are keratinocytes the keratinocytes are the structural cells that make up the epidermis so they give the skin a structural uh, integrity or they form the skin barrier so skin barrier helps in the protection skin barrier helps in protection and it also decreases the permeability and then keratinocytes also have an immunological role so they are not only the structural cells they also have an immunological role down the lane though they are not the primary immunological cells of the skin next we have the melanocyte so this is an important cell because we all know that melanin is the pigment which gives color to the various skin types so the melanocyte so where it is present uh, melanocyte is usually present on the in the basal layer it is present in the basal layer so in between stratum basal cells there is presence of melanocytes so uh, i've tried to depict the melanocyte here so here we see that it is a very dendritic cells there are multiple dendrites of the melanocytes and they are uh, we can say they are abutting into the melanocyte uh, sorry the keratinocyte they are abutting into the keratinocyte so the dendrites they are moving into the keratinocytes and there are certain granules which carry the melanin which are going into the keratinocytes so melanin from the melanocyte is going into the keratinocyte through these dendrites so melanocyte helps in melanin production because of the presence of enzyme tyrosinase so it converts tyrosine into melanin now what is the epidermal melanin unit so the epidermal melanin unit has a ratio of 1 is to 36 what this essentially means is that one melanocyte will give color to almost 36 keratinocytes so this is what it essentially means next we have the langerhans cells so the langerhans cells they are the official antigen presenting cells these are also dendritic cells so what is the function of a langerhans cell so whenever there is a foreign antigen or a self antigen or a neo antigen it will present it to the lymph node the antigen presenting cell will engulf the neo antigen and it will get presented on the mhc2 which is being expressed on the langerhans cell then it will move to the lymph node so it will move to the nearby lymph node now if the antigen presentation is under functioning it will lead to infections or cancers because the infection will not be detected early by the lymph node so it will lead to increased incidence of infections but if the langerhans cells are over functioning it will lead to autoimmune diseases because it will also recognize the self antigens so langerhans cells are the official antigen presenting cells next we have the merkel cells so merkel cells are the touch receptors they are usually present in stratum basale now there is a concept of transit time so what does it say it says that uh, these are the keratinocytes of the stratum basale and these are the cells of the uh, uppermost layer so stratum corneum this is the stratum corneum now we see that there is some change in the configuration of these cells so what changes occur during the process of keratinization the cells initially they were cuboidal as they move up they become flat now you also see that i have made a nucleus here but this corneocyte it lacks nucleus so they also lose nuclei the amount of keratin also increases and the desmosome it gets replaced by the cornified cell envelope so when we'll study about keratinization in depth we'll understand what cornified cell envelope means but what we essentially need to know is that through the process of keratinization there is formation of a skin barrier in the uppermost layer so what is this transit time transit time is the time taken by the uh, lowermost keratinocyte from the stratum basale to move up to the stratum corneum so it is essentially 28 days it is 28 days but in certain diseases like psoriasis it becomes four days moreover as i already told you that the cells they need to lose the nucleus but in psoriasis the cells are nucleated so the corneocytes 
they will be nucleated in psoriasis now we'll study about the skin lesions so we need to know the primary no nomenclature of the skin lesions what is a primary lesion what is a secondary lesion and how do we differentiate so let us start with basic the primary lesions so what are the primary lesions so a cut off of 0.5 cm has been given in some references it is also 1 cm so if we have a flat lesion it is known as a macule if we have a flat lesion which is more than 0.5 cm it is called a patch so the lesion has to be flat next we have elevation or change in consistency so i don't only mean elevation it can be elevated it can also be depressed so if it is less than 0.5 cm it is known as a papule if it is more than 0.5 cm depending upon what the configuration of the lesion is if it has more uh, breadth it will be called a plaque if it has it has a depth it will be called a nodule next we have fluid filled lesions so if a, there is a lesion which has clear fluid it will be known as a vesicle if it is less than 0.5 cm and a bulla if it is more than 0.5 cm then if the same lesion is filled with pus it will be called a pustule and then we have the dermal edema so it is called a v dermal edema is called v which we usually seen in conditions like urticaria v is a lesion of the urticaria fine so these were the primary lesions so we have studied about a macule patch papule plaque so we should be easily able to differentiate that if it is a flat lesion it will be called a macule or a patch if it is an elevated lesion or a depressed lesion or it has any secondary changes upon it for example it has scaling then it automatically becomes a papule or a plaque now the secondary lesions so first of all scale scale can be defined as physical visible exfoliation of the stratum corneum so there are various types of scales in dermatology in numerable types but some basic types which are important for mcq so silvery scales which are seen in psoriasis powdery or brani scales which are seen in p versicolor and then we have a colored scale which is seen in pityriasis rosea so in pityriasis rosea this is the lesion this is the lesion the scale will be attached at the periphery and it will be hanging from the center so this is also known as the hanging curtain sign this is known as the hanging curtain sign next we have a crust so crust is the dried exudate whatever plasma it exudates from a lesion when it dries it forms the crust and then we have lichenification so what does lichenification mean lichenification is a triad of increased skin markings thickening of the skin and hyperpigmentation of the skin so we will see this word word lichen uh, repeated multiple times in uh, dermatology so lichen actually means tree moss so a lesion which resembles tree moss it has a variegated surface so hyperpigmentation thickening and increased skin marking then there are certain special lesions so one special lesion that i want to talk about essentially is the burrow so burrow is a characteristic lesion which is seen in it is seen in scabies so the sarcoptai scabii mite it makes a burrow in a stratum corneum so it makes a hole in the stratum corneum and at the end lies the mite then we have the shapes of the lesion so shapes of the lesion first of all the annular or the ring type of lesion so it is seen in tinea in granuloma annular there will be an annular region there will be clearing in the center and at the periphery they may there may be presence of scales or there may be erythema then we have circinate lesion so when a lot of annular lesions fuse they will form a circinate lesion then there is the arrangement so arrangement can be along lymphatics this is important mcq wise also and for all budding dermatologists the sporotrichoid pattern it will be asked multiple time in vivas and it is a very important question what all diseases have a sporotrichoid sp spread so very easy mnemonic most of you must be knowing this cat and splat so here we have the sporotrichoid spread so it is seen in cat scratch disease atypical mycobacterial infections especially the fish tank granuloma which is called by, caused by uh, mycobacterium merinum so in fish tank granuloma it is seen
then cutaneous tuberculosis, nocardiosis, sporotrichosis, very important, never forget because the name is sporotrichoid spread. Then pheohyphomycosis, it is also a type of subcutaneous fungal infection, leishmaniasis, anthrax, tularemia. So there are a lot of causes of sporotrichoid spread, but just to enumerate a few and easily remember a few, this mnemonic has been made. Then there are the target lesions. So what are target lesions? Target lesions will have three distinct zones. So one, two, three distinct zones. So I've written POE. It is a mnemonic. It stands for pallor, edema and erythema. So it is seen in erythema multiforme. Erythema multiforme characteristically has target lesions in erythema chronicum migrans. So it will have a target lesion. Then there are target toid lesions. So targetoid means that they are not exactly target lesions, but they look like target lesions somewhere in between. So it is seen in 10 and HCS. So say they'll have two zones. Now we'll study about the basic phenomenon in skin. Very, very important phenomena. That is the Kopner's phenomena or the isomorphic phenomena. So isomorphic. Iso means same. Morphic means morphology. So the lesion there will be a primary lesion and then there will be multiple lesions in a linear fashion of the same morphology. So you see I have made one lesion here then small lesions of similar morphology. So there will be same morphology. So what are the types of Kubner phenomenon? So in some books you will find four types but to easily remember I have just classified into three the true, false and rare. True Three diseases you have to remember. All three are autoimmune diseases and you have to remember this. Psoriasis, lichen planus vitelli. Then false. False means that it is not actually Kobner phenomenon. It is just auto inoculation. So it is a viral disease and the viral particles are getting inoculated whenever you scratch. So it is seen in warts or molluscum contagiosum. And then there are there is the Kobner phenomenon which is seen in certain diseases rarely like Darius disease, Haley Haley disease, like Lichenitidus, you can remember these. Isotopic phenomenon. So what is this isotopic phenomenon? So iso means same again. Topic means site. So for example, uh, you a person has a lesion, pre-existing lesion and another type of morphology is occurring on that same site. So it is known as the isotopic phenomenon. Then, curiously, we also have a reverse Kobner phenomenon in which post-trauma, the lesions disappear. So, it is said to occur in psoriasis. It is also said to occur in granuloma annular. Finally, I want to thank you all for being patient enough because this is a long video. But I would like to again emphasize that whenever you open your dermatology books or you try to study the notes, this video is a must so that you can understand everything that is written. You don't confuse between a papule, a plaque, a patch and you basically it becomes easier to read that book or those notes. I will try to cover most of the topics pertaining to NEAT PG in such small videos so that you can easily see those videos within a period of 15 to 20 minutes and you can solve your MCQs. I thank you all again. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and this is my email ID. If you need these particular notes or any sort of notes that I've al already uh, given you in my videos, you can just mail me and I'll send the notes to you. So thank you all and I'll meet you next time.